stretch of Texas softball coming your way. But the seventh inning, as soon as this one concludes, about half an hour, we will come your way with the matchup to conclude things for Texas, Louisiana against the Texas Longhorns. This, what the Longhorns have done over the course of the weekend, a win against Tennessee State to begin things on Friday. So it will be a rematch from a game that Texas took 6-2 over the Raging Cajuns on Friday. Two more wins for Texas in between there over McNeese and Princeton. So as soon as this game wraps up, we will be your way with Louisiana, Texas, about half an hour. Come back to join us here on Longhorn Network. We will see you then. That's in their bats alone. Not a lot of free passes, but it's up and down the lineup. Freshman Leanne Good and Vivian Martinez have been hot, but sophomore Mia Scott, junior Courtney Day have joined the party. Texas starting to drop a little bit more home runs as well this weekend. See the slugging percentage, 14th in D1, the runs per game, six at 7.8. Texas has won 14 games here at home. Part of that with their eight that they have won overall on the season. A 16-2-1 record, five shutouts, three top 25 wins, nearly outscoring their opponents by 100 runs overall on the season. As for Louisiana, this is a team that's been to the last three NCAA tournaments, dominant in the Sun Belt. But Jerry Glasgow, their head coach, who you see there, looking to walk out of this weekend with a split against Texas. Yeah, Jerry Glasgow talked to us about the schedule he put together for his team. He knew it was going to be rigorous, and he wants to try to split this weekend, even next weekend when they go to Florida, try to get some wins against ranked teams to incre increase their RPI. But they're going to have to make some adjustments. They scored early in the first game against Texas, but later in the game, it was Texas who made the adjustment and was able to walk out with the win. Texas, the seventh ranked foe that they've played this season. They do have two top 25 wins over number 25 UCF and 14 LSU already to their resume for Coach Glasgow in his sixth season as we look at their starting lineup. You like Maya Davis at the top? She's having a good weekend. Maya Davis is having a tremendous weekend, hitting 643 on the weekend. She has so much speed. It makes defenses rush. She only has one double, so out of all her hits, only one is for extra bases. But I think the biggest key or the biggest stat to me, 10 out of 11 stolen bases this weekend alone. Put some pressure on the Texas defense. In the circle, it will be sit Lolly Gutierrez, the freshman from Stanford, Texas. Four and one, one loss record, 1.40 ERA. Opponents hitting 143, but Kat, we were here a week ago where the freshman comes out, throws a no-hitter. Yes, yeah, Sitlali Gutierrez got the start against Texas Southern to close out last weekend, a five-inning no-hitter, one pitch away from a perfect game, but was really in command. And you know what? She's been in command ever since. We've seen her this, this weekend for five innings of relief. She's done a tremendous job keeping runners off base, hasn't allowed a run. In her 25 innings for the season total, only 13 hits, only two of those have gone for extra bases. How she does it. Take us through the scouting report. She's going to be mid to upper 60s. We're going to see a lot of upspin, rise ball. She has an off-speed curveball that she'll throw to keep hitters off balance. And then her fastball has drop spin, so they use, utilize that as a drop ball. She's really been able to command that pitch to offset the other two. And that's going to be her key, is being able to command down in the zone, but stretch it when the time is right. Texas in their icy whites. The Cajuns in the all red. Of the batting helmet. Final day underway. Ball. Two balls to begin the at bat to Maya Davis, freshman from Love Lady, Texas. You know where Love Lady, Texas is? Neither do I. Have to look it up here. 2 0. Davis on the season, 533, 30 at-bat, 16 hits. One of those for extra bases. It was a double. But as mentioned, when she gets on, can be a menace to defenses. Love Lady is in Houston County, Texas. And the batter from Love Lady is on, Davis. Population 570. 
Well, Davis was the only two runs that you, Louisiana got against Texas on Friday night. Both times got herself on base with singles, able to advance and score. If Texas can keep her at bay, they'll have a chance at keeping the UL offense at bay as well. Maddie Hayden, sophomore, 295 hitter on the year. 18 hits, six of those are doubles, the sophomore from West Monroe, Louisiana. Defense for Texas, left to right in the infield. Washington Martinez, good. Sim is over at first. Atwood behind home. So it will be that Texas defense keeping an eye on Davis over at first. Outfield is Scott Dayton Maloney left to right. Big switch today with the defense is Mia Scott going out to left field. Alyssa Washington back in the lineup after taking yesterday off, but at third base. Also see her with full on knee brace today. Two one count. Runner is going. So Davis got the early jump. We'll round to third. Be in safely back to back singles to begin the game for the Raging Cajuns. Maya Davis on the move, so this single allows her easily to get over. Decision from the umps here being sent back to the batter's box is Hayden. First base umpire Brian Crochet is gonna say that Davis. Maya Davis left early. Yeah. So wow, Texas getting a break there and a tough break for Louisiana. Oh yeah, Maya Davis is two steps off before Sitlali Gutierrez delivers that pitch. So runners have to wait till the ball has left the pitcher's hand and you see right there, she's a step off and Sitlali's hand is still by her ear. Good call by the umpire. Wow. Chad Spittler, Brian Crochet, and Tatum Stoltling, the umpire trio for today, but Texas, the benefactors in Louisiana, Coach Glasgow getting some clarification there as it looked like they had a very good early scoring opportunity, but the speedy Davis was called out for leaving early. So Hayden is sent back to the batter's box with a 2-1 count, and now one out on the board. What a difference for our team looking to split the series, wanting to get off to a hot start. They look to do so with two singles, but not the case. A lot of times you have a runner as fast as Maya Davis and you assume there's no way she left early. She's just that fast. But as the replay showed, she definitely was a step and a half off the bag before Sitlali Gutierrez let go of the ball. Good eyes by the umpire. Outside to make the count full. Not so good when you do your scorecard and pen for both of us, but Make at least we work. don't erase. Count full. Gutierrez ready. Aiden awaits. Fouled off. Texas four victories this weekend began Friday, 9-3 over Tennessee State, 6-2. In the first meeting between these two teams in 4 nothing over McNeese State, 2-1 against Princeton. And McNeese State, four shutout at home this season. A Texas team that has gone 14-1. and one. So Hayden does get on, but via the walk. Only the third start of the season for Sitlali Gutierrez, and I think there's a little bit of nerves going on because we've seen her very efficient when she comes in in relief, attacking the strike zone, being able to control 
the corners. She's just not as sharp so far in this first inning against Louisiana. First pitch swung on that over the head of Maloney. So Hayden rounding being held up, sliding in safely to second. Carly Heath. This pitch elevated and over the middle of the plate. Carly Heath is one of the best hitters for the Rage and Cajun squad. You cannot leave balls there for her to be able to drive. The lefty has flexed a lot of power this year for the Cajuns, and she puts them in scoring position right now. Well, and Hayden, who did get on via the walk, but all three batters that have been up have hit the ball and hit the ball very hard. Yeah, like I said, I think some nerves are playing part in the fact it's only the third start for Gutierrez. She's been really good out of the bullpen, but you have to be able to come in in the first inning with that same mentality of attacking the strike zone, but not with too good of pitches, be able to stretch it when the time is right. She fell behind Maya Davis and Maddie Hayden both early in the at bat. So Coach White out to calm her down a little bit and talk about what the game plan is. Again, obviously a difference between her last start in Texas Southern, the quality of opponent, Louisiana coming in, that NCAA pedigree. Couple of wins against quality opponents and off to a solid start. Can they capitalize though with two in scoring position? The four hole hitter, Sophie Piscos. Well, and other than Maya Davis, Sophie Piscos has been the second hottest hitter for this Raging Cajun Ball Club this weekend. Hitting 571 with two RBIs, two doubles. So she's starting to heat up right now for the Cajuns as well. From Paris, Tennessee, 318, her average on the year, three doubles, six runs batted in. One one count. Big cut. Well, that's the off speed curveball that Lolly Gutierrez possesses. So when she throws it really well, it'll be knee height, extend off the plate a little bit. But it's mid to mid to high fifties maybe, so it's about six to eight miles an hour difference of her hard stuff. And it's really a good offsetting pitch, especially against right-handed hitters. Back up the middle, bounces. That will allow a run to come in. Hayden for the first of the ball game. Stormy Kultzel, Nick. Starting at first. Transfer from Washington, Carmel, Indiana. An athlete that, talking to Jerry Glasgow last year when she had transferred into UL, he said he couldn't get her out of the hitting cages. She is just a workhorse, wants to constantly work on her swing and work on hitting. Puts a charge into this ball out to center field. Dayton back towards the track, nearly one foot there. Some hard hit balls. Louisiana able to strike first to the tune of one. Texas head coach Mike White this season at the helm for a team that went to the Women's College World Series final championship series last year. Has his team on an eight game win streak. Really taking advantage of these games they are playing at home as Courtney Day had a
good effort in the first meeting between Louisiana home run. Yeah, Courtney Day, two home runs in that first game Friday night, hitting 500 on the weekend, a bat that Texas really wanted to see heat up. The conversation has been about the freshmen so far this season, but Courtney Day taking this weekend at home to start to get herself rolling five RBIs and a little 500 batting average is a bat. Longhorns in the midst of a four weekend set. All tournaments hosted here. They do have a jaunt up to Arlington to play on Wednesday against UT Arlington, but the Bevo Classic coming next week for Texas. Chloe Riaceto, 3.20 ERA, 15 in the third innings for the freshman pitched on the year thus far for Riaceto, 241. Opponents hitting. Yeah, the lefty getting her first start in this top 25 matchup. Talk about the nerves a little bit, possibly for Sitlali Gutierrez in her third start, second of a ranked matchup, but Chloe Riaceto, first, first start of the year against number 11, Texas. 10 strikeouts, seven walks. It's given up nine runs, seven of them earned. Across her nine appearances. Leanne Good, the freshman, 446. We saw a little bit of a chess match on Friday night. Louisiana put her in with Texas having two left-handed hitters coming up assuming they were playing the lefty on lefty matchup. And after the first lefty got a bunt single, Texas went to enter Jordan Whitaker, right-handed hitter, and Louisiana plump, promptly put their right-handed pitcher back in to the game. Back our way and out of play. So while we saw Rhea Seto on Friday, we only saw her for one hitter. Do you have any action towards the press box when I wasn't here? We had one go up that way a little bit, but. Who do you think would be a, a better fielder, me or Alex? Oh, you're putting me on the yeah. spot. Yeah, yeah Alex is afraid of the ball, oh, so yeah. I think you no. you might. Alex and I would both be ducking. Two, Riaceto to good. Another one fouled off. Riaceto working her rise ball up in the zone to good. A couple foul balls, you see him spinning back. It's the up spin from Riaceto. Have to imagine Jerry Glasgow went with Riaceto today versus Sam Landry, who you would have assumed would have gotten the second start against Texas this weekend to try to combat the left-handed hitters that Texas has in their lineup. Outside for ball four. Seto finding, having a little trouble finding the strikes only and good, an eight pitch walk, really working the count against her. Pitches seem to be tailing up right now. So Texas, if they're patient, gonna be able to make a lot happen with free passes and just forcing her to come back down over the plate. Well, you talk patience at the plate, Mia Scott, seven walks, but 20 consecutive games on base, 16th player program history to do 20 or more. First since Janae Jefferson, who did it for 24 straight. So feeling very comfortable, confident in the batter's box does Scott, 484. Her season average, 677 slugging, 536 the OBP. Good is going for second. Throw bounces off the shortstop. 
Vasquez and into center where Davis is there to back it up, but good in safety. Yeah, the interesting stat for Texas this weekend was the fact they had only attempted four steals, but they haven't really needed to run the bases freely with the way they've been swinging the bats, but Coach White putting good in motion, forcing Piscos behind the plate in Louisiana to make some defensive plays. Longhorns with a runner in scoring position and a big strikeout for Riaseto to get one of the hottest hitters in the Texas lineup, probably in the country as well, to sit down. Well, I mentioned that I thought Riaseto was getting this start to combat the lefties in Texas's order, and this is why that curveball runs away from left-handed hitters, and the left-handed hitters in Texas's lineup haven't seen that very much this season. Mia Scott unable to stay with that curveball. She took the first two in the at-bat thinking they were too far outside. Ooh. So Washington will take strike one. Sophomore from Abilene, Texas. 292, the average on the year, 14 hits. She does have 19 runs batted in. Trying to make it 20, but that just foul. Couple feet right field line. Back to that strikeout of Mia Scott, though. That's a big response after walking the leadoff hitter of the game by the freshman, Riosetto, for the Cajuns. Washington, 7 of 20 with runners in scoring position on the season, 350 average. Down 0 2, though. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Rhea Seto. Well, Rhea Seto set this pitch up well by going outside and then stretches the zone up and in, knowing that Texas likes that up and in pitch. They've driven it out of the park a couple times this weekend, but if you can get it high enough, that means you think you, think you can get them chasing. Great location right there by Rhea Seto. So a great response after the walk to good. Leaves her on second base still to Courtney Day. We talked about when we showed you the Texas lineup the weekend she has had thus far for the junior from Paraland, Texas. Two home runs this weekend. Tied for a team high with four, Leanne Good. As such, let's take a look at the swings from Day. Day, there's an up and in pitch, not high enough, belt high, but she takes that off the wall of the graduate housing being built out there in left field. And then an off-speed pitch she just takes to dead center field off the scoreboard. Solid eight iron to center field. This ball to right field and will good come in. Does indeed. Ties the ball game. Courtney Day having a weekend. When Courtney Day is seeing the ball well, she's hard to pitch to because she can hit to all fields. This ball low and out. Great piece of hitting for Courtney Day just to try to take this to right field. Gets herself an RBI, ties the game for Texas. So the Longhorns capitalize. Viana Martinez will be the batter. That's the curveball right there that Riaseto is going to continue to offer these left-handed hitters for Texas until they make an adjustment. They're going to have to start trying to be aggressive and drive that to left or to right field. No, left. So excuse me, left field, left center, if they want to take that pitch away from her. Martinez, what a start to her career in the burnt orange. 31 hits in her 59 at-bats coming into this contest. The 31, a team leading. Second doubles with six. This ball hard hit out to left, ranging back over the head and glove of Hayden. Bounces off the wall. Data home in Texas with their second run of the inning. This is that curveball, and Vivi Martinez does a great job of going down and staying with it. Hayden out in left field hesitated just a little bit. 
And you either have to commit to catching that or commit to playing it off the wall. The bounce off the wall allows Courtney Day to score from first. But a great adjustment by Vivian Martinez on that curveball from Riaceto. You look at this lineup, one through five for Texas, so good. Eight doubles on the weekend for Texas from Martinez. Now she moves up into a tie with Good and Scott for seven on the season. Katie Simmons, a sophomore from Humble, Texas. Get it. Just number wise, you look at the lineup. This is where Texas really has, has played around and tried to fit the right combination together, six through nine of who can go behind those five that have really led the offensive charge all season. Yeah, and we saw Simmons heat up a little bit yesterday. She returned to the lineup this weekend after resting for a weekend, or for a week, excuse me. But really, Ashton Maloney's been the only mainstay down there in the bottom half of the lineup. Well, I'll use it for you now. You said she's heated up, but one might say she simmers. <laughs> one, two, two out, runner on second in scoring position. Texas already with two on, but Riaceto with solid strikeout pitches and has another one to close the door on the inning, but Texas gets a couple of hits and a couple of runs. Two, one here in Austin, second inning when we come back. the world. And in the circle for Texas, it will be Sitlali Gutierrez. It's her second game started. She already has a career high in innings pitch and strikeouts. Make it number eight for the freshman. Gutierrez one out away from a masterful performance here at McCombs. Strikeout and no hitter for Sitlali Gutierrez. That was one week ago. Closed out the weekend, successful for Texas. 22 runs, they had set a single game record for hits in that matchup against TSU. It's a pretty good day at the ballpark, but this very much a learning experience for Gutierrez, still very young in her career, obviously, and talked about the difference in start. No shade to any of those other teams, but Louisiana, the most difficult hitting order that she will have faced as a starter. Well, yeah, it's her second or her third start, second against a top rank, a top 25 team, and the Raging Cajuns are known for their offense and the power. Jerry Glasgow's philosophy is, you're going to swing, you're swinging it hard, and so it's a different offense than what she has faced in her previous start. But also she has gone in in relief against offensive offensive that have that power. We talked about Virginia Tech. She did relieve Friday night's game against the Cajuns. So she's faced some, it just hasn't been from first pitch and obviously for extended innings. Alexa Langlier is the batter at the plate. Starter at second, 269 average on the year. 973 OPS. Texas with a micro huddle. You just come in and make sure you're talking to your pitcher a little bit so they don't feel like they're on an island out there. Count 3-1. Langliers takes ball four, and the numbers for her, interesting you look. She leads the team in strikeouts with 10, but she also leads the team in walks with 13. Well, she's been patient, but she's also had breakout games. You talk about UL beating UCF. An 8 0 5 inning game. Well, she had seven RBIs in that game, two home runs. A little bit streaky with the bat, but able to find her way on base. It's her fourth walk of the weekend, yet hasn't registered a hit all weekend. Junior 
Jordan Campbell began a career at Texas A&M. Campbell on the year 267. Started now in 18 games, played in 21. Twelve hits, 45 at bats, two doubles, triple, two home runs. A lot of English on this ball underneath Leanne Good from second there to make the grab for out number one. Well, just like we talk about Texas having to figure out the bottom half of their lineup. The Cajuns are doing the same thing right now. And so while they try to work to figure out who's going to flush out six through nine of their order, this is where Sitlali Gutierrez wants to be able to attack the zone and make things happen. Victoria Valdez, the freshman 279 hitter. 12 hits, four doubles, two home runs. And that's the strike that Sitlali Gutierrez needs to exploit as much as possible. Chloe Riaceto on the other side had figured out that's where she was getting a good number of strikes called. We saw Courtney Day go down through it. But if Sitlali Gutierrez can live there as well, it'll open up things up for her just a little bit. Well outside for ball number two. Going, throw from Atwood, great snare out of the air by Martinez coming over. That ball could have easily got into center field, but into scoring position, Langliers. Well, good call here by Jerry Glasgow, knowing that Sitlali Gutierrez was working behind. She uses her off-speed pitch quite a bit in these at-bats to right-handed pitchers, so taking a gamble that one, it would be off-speed, and two, the catcher's gonna have to sit and try to make it Look like a strike if it's even close. Ball to short. Martinez fields, checks the runner who will now go, and Texas turns the double play to end the inning. Texas with a great job here. Vivian Martinez checks the runner. Leanne Good delivers the throw. Double play, Texas going to the bottom of the second. Langlier standing on third. That is because the umps are looking at the slide and was she safe or was it a double play as called on the field? See the foot of Washington. Look at that left foot on the bag and does it block off just enough so she can swipe down the tag? And it will be upheld. So the inning ends with Texas turning a double play. Nice execution by the Longhorns defense. It's one aspect we haven't really talked a bunch about for this team defensively. Feels like at this stage in the year, they're a lot further ahead than where they were last year at this stage in the year. Agreed. I think last year at this stage, the talk was how much errors were costing them games, costing them opportunities um, to hold on to leads. But this year, they've had they've had their fair share of errors still, but it hasn't been as costly. And then on the flip side of that, we've seen this weekend two plays in, sp in particular for Texas like that. That play, a double play yesterday. There was a bunt down the first baseline. Texas able to get the out at first and then get the lead runner trying to go to third while Katie Simmons, the catcher, covering third. And we also saw 
some great defense from Vivian Martinez as well. So Texas has had some really good defensive plays that have helped them get out of tough situations. But at the same time, the errors haven't been as costly, I think, as they were a year ago. And you couple that with the offense that we've seen thus far for Texas. Pretty good combination. This is how Texas has their two on the board. Leanne Good walks, stole a base, a couple of strikeouts from Rhea Seto, and then Texas capitalizes at the plate. Courtney Day, who's had a strong weekend thus far with her RBI, and Viviana Martinez with the RBI double. But it was feast or famine really in the circle for Rhea Seto, either hard hits or three strikeouts. Yeah, the, the walk to Leanne Good to start off the top or the bottom of the first, excuse me, after your team had just scored a run was really kind of the detriment in the fact it gives Texas a little bit of some momentum, let them see eight pitches into the at bat, but she did. She quickly caved me and Scott and Alyssa Washington, but Courtney Day and Vivian Martinez coming up with the big clutch hits before another strikeout of Katie Simmons. Freshman Ashton Maloney starting at right field. But we can add to our tally running for the season of leadoff walks scoring right now in this game. 100%. 100%. Didn't we talk about that last weekend? Yeah. It was 100% last weekend. You were here. For all the teams, yeah. <laughs> it's been a lot of softball for you. <laughs> I, I had a little break in between. Yeah, we had a Wednesday night game, too. We did. Jeez. Maloney on the ground. Quick flip by Langliers, and she is out over at first. Good reaction. Maloney trying to use the ground and create the high hop here. Just not high enough. Great pick by Langley Ayers and a throw on the run. Not an easy play, but she makes that look smooth. Defense is the one aspect of the game that Jerry Glasgow was talking about wanting to shore up this year. He said in years past, the defense has cost him. It hasn't been as good as elite team, so he really wants to figure out how to make that piece fit in their puzzle with their pitching and their offense. Freshman catcher Reese Atwood. Another one to second, flipped over. Yet yeah, defense, it, it seems like the one non-negotiable that you should always be good on. De the one most controllable aspect of the game. You can drill it, you can rep it, mental focus that it requires, all the other variables, pitcher, all those different things that come in with hitting defense, you can be good. Yeah, defense is something that you can control, but I think sometimes you get coaches who are offensive minded, they're the hitting coach, and so they go with the best nine hitters, and sometimes that one hitter who might be really good may be costing you on defense, so you have to look at how much are they producing runs versus costing you runs, and is there someone else in your lineup that maybe you could put on defense, use that hitter in a different way, and that's where I think Jerry Glasgow talking about his philosophy changing just a little bit. Vasquez right now, not necessarily an extremely hot hitter, but he knows what she can do defensively. So he wants to try to work her in later in season. If she's not hitting, then maybe he'll platoon her with somebody else who is. But until then, he wants to be able to focus on the defensive element. That conversation the same on the flip side for Texas. You look one through five, the production they've had, and now six on down. But those players that will be in the lineup because Bella Dayton, what they bring defensively on that side of the field so they can play a full three-phased game. Yeah, you talk about, well, Bella Dayton on defense, Alyssa Papelka with her speed. We've seen her down here in the nine hole. You know, Texas giving Reese Atwood a lot of looks right now because defensively with her, her arm behind home plate, she's the strongest arm for them. Now she will platoon with Katie Simmons all year to keep them both healthy. But you have to allow your pieces to get opportunities before you just write them off. Yeah, always an intricate dance for coaches and how much patience you give with a batter at the plate. And if that's at the detriment or benefit with the player you put in the field on your day to day. And that's where you have to be able to also cultivate hitters that understand their role might be the pinch hitter. Dayton bringing a trio of defenders down and safely into first. So challenging the defense, the arm of Valdez coming all the way from third in safely. 
Well, after showing slap, Bella Dayton goes ahead and bunts and pulls this a little bit down the first base line. Good hustle by Valdez, but great hustle by Bella Dayton getting down the line too. To be honest, I don't feel like that should be Valdez's ball, but she does a great job hustling to get it. Jerry Glasgow gonna use his second review already. So that is what these umpires will do. The call on the field, safe at first base, and Bella Dayton looking at, did the throw from Valdez, beat her to the bag. Well, the hustle on this play by both Bella Dayton and Valdez is strong, but you see Bella Dayton reaching for the bag. Oh, she's... That's bang, bang. As the ball hits the glove, her foot's there on the orange bag, so I don't know how definitive that is. It's gonna be close. It's gonna be I'm close, and regardless, Jerry Glasgow will now have used the only two reviews that he can possibly use. So in the second inning, he's out of opportunities to call for a play to be All looked right. at. I got my eye on the foot. You watch the ball. The foot is on the bag. The ball is sec secure. Not yet. Next frame. I don't think the foot's there. Foot is there. See, glove's not closed, though. There that is the foot. It's the frame right before that where the glove's not closed yet. And, her and the foot looks like it's still up. Yeah. Could be contacting the bag. But obviously nothing there definitive enough to overturn the call on the field, which is Bella Dayton safe with a bunt single, two outs, top of the order, and that's what you ask of your nine hole. Turn yeah. it around to the top. Turn it to the top, who's been hitting and been hot all season long. Both plays that Jerry Glasgow has asked to be reviewed have been bang, bang, super close plays. The unfortunate part is it has to be 100% definitive on replay cannot be questionable to be overturned. And both of those just so close that it's not definitive. Leanne Good, walk, stole base, scored. Texas now with three hits on the board. Going is Dayton. Diving head first into second. Second stolen base of the year on her fourth attempt. Well, Texas again only attempted four steals all weekend, but two so far in this game and two successful. Great jump by Bella Dayton right on time. Again, regardless of what wrist injury she had in the fall, she is not scared to be going diving into bags. Got the oven mitt. She does. I've never actually seen one of those up in like in person. I want to. I want to feel like how how protective is that really? And the wrist guard on the right hand of Dayton. And she was held out injury wise, and the first time we see her, it was diving into home, head first, hand first. Last weekend. Riasetto coming back from a 3-0 count to good. What's the pitch here? I would go back with that inside pitch. Her curveball's been working away to lefties into righties. This ball dives in past the outstretched Vasquez and will bring home Dayton. Texas with the two-out run on the board. Hayden's playing so far back with a runner of Dayton's speed on second. Could be because it's early in the game and Louisiana is going to trust that they could possibly score some more runs. But there was no play at home on Dayton on that ground ball at all. So Mia Scott's second chance at the plate. What are the adjustments after she struck out? Cuts at the first pitch out to Hayden in left for out number three. But Texas gets one with two down. Dayton crossing the RBI from Leanne. Good Longhorns leading 
three to one third inning when we come back. Texas two in the first one more in the second three one ball game between these two top 25 teams. Tyler Denning Cat Osterman beautiful Sunday 77 degrees. Moderate breeze is how it characterize it out to left center. Not a cloud in the sky at least from our vantage point not even a wisp. Good crowd out here to take in the final day of the Longhorn Invitational Texas. Winners of their last eight. Going back to last weekend, they dropped a Friday night matchup, but then one all the way through, one midweek. Since a quality opponent in UNT, and then victories four to the tally thus far this weekend. One of those was against Louisiana 6-2 on Friday night. Nine hole hitter, Cecilia Vasquez, beginning the inning for the Raging Cajuns. Texas has given themselves quite the schedule as well. Not, I think, as tough as last year was, especially early on, but they did go out to Clearwater that first weekend, as you mentioned, against ranked opponents. Virginia Tech is going to stay in the rankings. And next weekend, Alabama coming in town, and they're a top 10 team. Swing and a miss. Gutierrez, first strikeout. Well, Gutierrez using this off-speed curve. It goes up a little bit, but Vasquez just selling out on the outer half, unable to hold back. Gutierrez settling in a little bit after that first inning. Always helps when your team plays a couple runs as well. Top of the order, second time through. Davis, who looked like it had really set the table for her team. Nice single, and then was standing on third after the single from Hayden or what would have been, but called out, leaving early over at first. So it negated that early momentum Louisiana had. What does she have here? Second time up. Gutierrez quickly ahead of Davis. Davis's speed is just it's so great. I mean, her and Mia Scott probably are very comparable. In fact, I'd like to see a foot race between the two, although I don't know that you'd, it'd probably be a photo finish and someone would ask for a replay. We got plenty of, <laughs> yeah. But. We have infinite challenges up here. A lot of times as a, only get two. Yeah, as a speed player, is you try to almost do too much. So you try to make sure you get a great jump and we did see on the replay she was out by or she was ahead of sit Lally's pitch by about a step and a half almost two steps but a lot of times there's runners that can get away with that too the first base ump doesn't necessarily keep an eye on it but brian crochet was on top of it over there in the first inning one two strike three gets her looking back-to-back -back strikeouts well, this is Sid Lolly Gutierrez settling into her location. This a little bit screw, a screwball splits the corner just about knee height. That's a pitch she hasn't been able to control a lot to Davis specifically. The hit in the first inning today and the hit in the end of the game on Friday were both elevated pitches. So tip your hat to Sid Lolly Gutierrez figuring out how to stay down in the zone against Maya Davis. Pitcher that came in with a 25 to five strikeout to walk tally and after facing eight batters had not got one back to back to begin the third inning. Hayden walked and scored. Long run on the board for Louisiana. Hard hit to short, fielded by Martinez. Makes the throw, a one, two, three inning. Forsyth Lolly Gutierrez. Speak with the Raging Cajuns head coach, Jerry Glasgow, when we come back to Austin. Changes the world. 3-1 contest, bottom of the third inning here in Austin. Louisiana head coach, Jerry Glasgow, joining us. Coach, it looked like your team had opportunity, early momentum there. It's 3-1 now. How do you stay with that, stay with the plan? Well, we just got to quit making, you know, mental mistakes, and there's four mental mistakes in the first inning and a half, and. You know, when you do that against a top 10 team, you're going to pay for it. And 
we're hitting the ball well. We just got to keep keep hitting and keep fighting and then hope something goes our way here in a little bit. Coach, you faked me out. I thought we were going to see Landry today. So can you uh, talk about your decision to start Chloe Riasetto instead? Well, we just kind of want to see what she'd do. It's her first start in a big game and a good setting here, you know, bring her back to Texas. And I knew she, you know, want, she appreciated the opportunity and wanted it. Give her the ball. And then let's, we're kind of going to go by committee here today. Go, I hope to get two to three innings per pitcher. Coach, we appreciate the time. Good. Thank Thanks, you. Jerry. By committee, Megan Shoreman is who you see in the circle, 14 in red, 3.36 ERA. For a two-game starter, 1-1 one, one record on the season, 44 and two-thirds innings. She has thrown the senior from Hazelwood, Missouri, who began her career at Kentucky. Opponents hitting 212 against her on the season, so a new arm, new look for Texas. Washington Day Martinez due up. Well, and Shorman threw really well on Friday night. She threw the first three and a third, but the first three were clean innings. Kept Texas off balance, utilizing both sides of the plate till Texas made adjustment, and Courtney Day hit the first of her two home runs. But she's going to be a very different look than Rhea Seto. She throws harder, coming from the right side, a little bit more upspin going to be coming at these right-handed hitters. Five and three record on the season for Shorman. Does have eight and a third inning work here this weekend. Had one, two is nobody has utilized the hatch hole to go up and grab the balls on the roof yet. What's the scout on Shorman? She's going to be upper 60s. She can touch 70 from time to time. But as I said, she's going to use that upspin, curve away to righties, a backdoor curve into them, and then we'll stretch up from there with a rise ball. They've been working on a changeup with her. She did show it some on Friday. So the key is going to be able to utilize that rise ball and change up in situations that Texas can't predict. I hear Jerry Glasgow talk about wanting to use pitchers for two or three innings each. And he has that, uh, that availability when he has five arms on his staff that he truly thinks can all complement each other. Off speed, patience from Washington. Watches it by to go three and two. And Rhea, you know, Shorman com like, is completely opposite of Rhea Seto. So she's gonna come in and completely change the pace of the game for Texas hitters. He has Sam Landry in his bullpen still. We saw Kendra Lamb on Friday. Yeah, the change in speed was so dramatic it slowed me up. You know, we did see Kendra Lamb come in for Shorman on Friday, and that's the only two pitchers that I feel like are similar on his staff, but they thought it was enough difference to try to keep Texas off balance, unfortunately. Didn't keep Courtney Day off balance. She hit her second home run off of Lamb. But it'll be interesting to see how they match up pitcher pitchers in this contest. Trying to get the ball situated. Requesting a new one, did Shorman. They're all up there, they're all on the roof. They haven't cleaned the roof this weekend. Now I figure you wait till the end of the weekend and then go up there, collect them all. Three, two, bases empty. Lead off batter for Texas in the bottom of the third inning. Another one foul. I'm, I'm fully on board with the rules. So if it is fouled, back to the stands where fans are. If the fan catches it, you get to keep it. Oh, is that the rule now? I, well, that's the rule that I'm trying to answer. I have seen less event staff taking balls away this weekend after they got booed la at the very end of last weekend. Ninth pitch of the at-bat. This one is in play over to third. Bounces off of Valdez and safely to begin the inning, Washington. Talked to Coach Glasgow just a second ago. He talked about the mistakes that the team has made. And he was talking about mental mistakes and just leaving early. That base running error, Langley errors possibly maybe not trying to stretch it to third, even though that was a close play. 
being smart about the fact you're already in scoring position. But right there, a defensive error. And Valdez is a catcher who he's trying to help, or trying to, I shouldn't say help, trying to find a spot for when she's not catching because she has been hitting for them. So again, trying to piece your offense into your defense without missing a beat. But unfortunately, they're playing in baseball. And I can't imagine playing that far back and having to wait wait for that ball to come get to me. I'm close, so it's just reactionary in the circle. <laughs> yeah, you don't but have much time. But when infielders play baseball, I feel like it just sometimes is so long for them to have to wait to get that ball. And that one rolled up on Valdez. Texas going to the bench for a pinch runner, Luke Gilbert. Over at first, taking the spot of Washington. Washington, we've seen in that big knee brace. Choose wisely against Day. Singled first time up. Hard hit ball, Day. Making another home run on the weekend. Her third. Well, I said it in the open, when Courtney Day is seeing the ball well, she sees it extremely well. This is a curveball, but up in the zone, she's able to drive that to left center field. We saw this version of Courtney Day in Oklahoma City last year as well, hitting three home runs in the last three games. She has incredible power, and the consistency has just needed to be there, and it has started to click this weekend. Yeah, last weekend we saw her just moments she struggled at the play, a couple big strikeouts, but all about adjustments, and she has definitely carried it over. Longhorn Invitational, seven for 12, three home runs, eight runs batted in, perfect two for two today. 240 feet, 71 miles per hour off the bat of Courtney Day, making it 5-1 Texas. Viviana Martinez. One for one was a double, first time up. Martinez out into right field. Kat, I'd asked you prior to this game, came in, looked at the scores for Texas, and compared to what we had seen last weekend, what we've seen numbers-wise for Texas, I was asking you, hey, where's the offense been? relative to what we have seen, and we're seeing that right here now. Yeah, it's, it's heating up now, and I think the big thing, too, that fans and everyone needs to remember is yesterday specifically, Friday got pushed back almost three hours. So 6.30 game started at 9.15. You finish at 11.30. You turn around and have a noon game and back-to-back -back games at that. So it was a long day, long weekend, but Texas starting to heat up. So much so, Louisiana looking for a new arm in the circle. Introduce you to Such Texas already with two on the board. Invest in yourself. New pitcher, Sam Landry. 3.23 ERA, 39 innings that she has pitched, 12th appearance of the year, 6 and 4 record, 50 strikeouts to 21 walks, 2 and 0 on the weekend. Opponents hitting 225 during the time down here in Austin, but test now to deal with the Texas lineup that is caught a blaze. Can do what they have been all year, averaging just under eight runs per game, slugging top 25 in the country. How does she do it in the circle? Well, Sam Landry's a sophomore who got a lot of experience last year. She's going to come in. She's going to change the pace. Upper 60s as well, but a little bit more east to west. Screw and curve. Has a rise ball, but her changeup is so deadly. We talk about Sophia Simpson for Texas and what her changeup can do. Sam Landry's similar. When she can control her changeup, she can be almost unhittable.
go back to the point Coach Glasgow had made to us, mistakes, the difference he felt in the game thus far. This inning began with an error over at third for Valdez, albeit on a hard hit ball, but that put Washington on Gilbert taking her spot, but then the pitch today, the batter that's obviously proven this weekend that can hurt you, and that proved last time these two teams met, that one pitch, two pitches, she can leave the yard. Simmas did strike out looking first time up is underneath this ball. It is in play. Shallow center field shortstop Vasquez taking it for the out. Well, the big thing is a lot of times when you're talking about giving up home runs and not that anyone tries to do that, but solo shots are a lot easier to come back from than crooked numbers. And so when you have a runner on via air or a free pass, a walk hit by pitch prior to that home run, it just becomes something that's so hard to defend and so hard to come back from. I think that's where Jerry Glasgow, if they only gave up a solo shot home run in an inning, they feel a little bit more comfortable, but it's the free passes before that. But laid down, I was looking initially, did it pop up and hit Maloney? I think she cleared the space and does hustle down the first to get on two on for Texas now. Ashton Maloney is the unsung hero of this Texas offense. She has found ways to continuously get herself on base using small ball, using her slap right there. She sees Stormy Kotzelnik staying back, so she takes that bunt down the first base line with her. Such great barrel control from the lefty slapper. You know, Tyler, I compare Sam Landry and Sophia Simpson with their off-speed pitches. The two of them were actually high school teammates and won the state tournament here at McCombs Field in 2021. Both hailing out of Mont Bellevue and Barbers Hill High School. So good memories to come back in. Obviously a completely different beast throwing to this Texas lineup. That was 10 hits thus far this year. Two of them home runs, one double, nine runs batted in. She struck out 10 times to three walks. Ground to third, sneaks by Valdez. That'll send Martinez home in safely. Texas with another run on the board. 6-1. Landry sneaks a change up in there, tries to get Reese Atwood. She gets just enough of it, but this is a double play in the making, but you see Valdez trying to already get her foot on the bag before fielding the ball. She has plenty of time to field step and then still make a throw to first. The freshman at third base just trying to rush things a little bit, and unfortunately the game's getting really fast on her. Two errors on the board, both charged to Valdez over at third in this inning. Texas with three already there, just one out, two on. The corners so may have a change. Mike White out. And it will be Bailey Brandon coming to the plate. Brandon earlier this weekend had a 223 foot home run, her first at Texas for the transfer. <laughs> on the deck to first, tapping on the bag to get the out. Another run does cross. Aggressive cut, brings home a run. 7-1 Texas. Seven, 
Top of the order now for Longhorns, eighth batter on the inning. There you see that off-speed pitch from Landry. Leanne Good trying to bunt it, but the downward slope it has out of her hand makes it hard for anyone to bunt and stay with it. Kind of like a drop ball, but a little bit off-speed, so your, your bunt timing is for the hard pitch, and then you have to hold up and try to make sure you put it down. Great pitch by Landry. Head 0-2. I was ready. I was ready. We got gloves up here if you need one. No. Netting help, helped out there. Yeah. Oh, 2 again, this ball in play, navigating through traffic did. Shortstop Vasquez to make the throw for the out. Texas gets four in the bottom of the third. They lead by six. Speak with their head coach, Mike White. When we come back to Red and Charlene McCombs Field. Longhorn legend. Absolutely gorgeous day here in the capital city of Austin, Texas. Red and Charlene McCombs Field, top 25 matchup. Number 11, Texas, leading 7-1, to one, joined by their head coach, Mike White. Coach, tell us your overall impressions. I know, heard a quote from you, little fatigued you felt yesterday, four games in 24 hours. What are you taking away from this weekend, this game? I thought it was pretty good. Obviously, the first inning was critical. There was Lally, you know, they could have really uh, put a number up on us, but we, we kind of bent but didn't break, and we were able to come back out. And uh, Courtney Day just having, having a great day. Coach, talk no. about Sitlali Gutierrez a little bit. Obviously, that first inning, they barreled her up just a little bit, but you went out, she settled in, and the last two innings so far, fingers crossed for yeah. you, yeah. she stays settled in. Well, you know, sometimes you can get ahead of yourself, especially as a freshman, and I think she was starting to do that, but she's thrown real well. Uh, tough time finding the structure to start with, but right now she's settling in pretty well. I saw you trying to, well, I heard you trying to sneak the Courtney pun in there. Yeah, we'll, I did. We'll, you know, <laughs> we'll call her Courtney Weekend. You know, no, that's her middle name. Uh, exactly. <laughs> Appreciate em. the time. All right, bye. I cut his pun off, unfortunately. I thought he was done talking. <laughs> the Texas team, as mentioned, in the midst of hosting four tournaments. Next weekend will be some really good competition. Wisconsin, Alabama, part of that. Unfortunately, you won't be out here. You'll be taking on a whole new challenge. I will be listening on a couch. <laughs> but. Longhorns, winners of eight consecutive, 16, two and one on the season. Carly Heath, the batter to begin the top of the fourth inning. What have you learned about Texas so far? Young season. Maybe things that you came in, questions that you had. What have you seen? Well, I think obviously last week or last weekend we saw them bend a little bit and, and towards the end of games, and, but they broke. We saw yesterday they got tested towards the end of the game. They held on to the win. And the biggest thing right now. Somebody trying to find the ball. Scott does, who has taken over at third for Washington. Was Atwood trying to side it in, but. Play made by Scott. Yeah, this ball just goes way high in the air, and you can tell Reese Atwood is like, I have no clue where it is. Somebody, somebody call it. Scott with great speed goes ahead, comes in. That is a corner's ball, so that way they're running in to make that catch. Piscos will be the batter, continue with. But yes, a big first out for Texas as Heath is the Cajun's leading hitter. But I think the other thing is against Louisiana specifically, they've been behind starting in the top of the, after the top of the first both games, and they have found a way to respond rather quickly. So I think with Texas right now, it's the fact that they can respond, which they hadn't really been tested from working behind a whole lot. And then two, figuring out that piece towards the end of the game of even if someone starts to put pressure on you, don't break, figure out how to control the controllables and seal the win. I think the biggest 
overall question I had, and I've asked you a bunch, was in the circle. How would Texas look? How would they piece, complement one another together? And we've seen some of that. We've seen growth. We've seen a high point, obviously, for Gutierrez throwing complete game last time out, starting on Sunday last week in the no hitter. As that staff continues to come together, the pitchers continue to get confidence in different roles than they're used to. I think it's going to be, and it's it's starting to piece itself together. You've seen it this weekend specifically, obviously Gutierrez being in relief both games on Friday. We've seen Mac Morgan start. We've seen Estelle Check start. Sophia Simpson got two starts this weekend. And it's being confident in each other, but also knowing, you know what, the days of con everyone throwing complete games all the time is very few now. And in that essence, when somebody comes in for you, knowing that they have the confidence to have your back and finish out the game as well. Mia Scott looking every bit the part over in the hot corner. Solid play. Good throw. Two up, two down. Any other takeaways? Any other aspects you look at for this team and you say uh, they need to shore up here or here's where there is a question mark? No, I think the well, for me, the biggest question mark is as season progresses, and by no means do I wish ill on any hitter that's already hot, but are the freshmen going to be able to handle the ups and downs that come when conference play and you play the same team three times, so there has to be adjustments made? Um, or you face you know, an elite pitcher like Montana Fouts, and you may only get one hit on the day. So are those, is the adversity going to be able to be handled by this freshman group? You talked about it, top of the show is, got Solnick gets on, shooting one through the gap between third and short, but Texas and the numbers, the power numbers, but the ability to execute and maybe a tighter 3-2 ball game. But that will be something to look forward to next weekend is Texas welcoming in some good teams. But healthy lead right now at 7-1. to one. It's Gutierrez trying to protect that in the circle. Raging Cajuns trying to cut into such. Langleers walked, stole a base. Part of that double play that ended in the second inning, and this one will end in the glove of Martinez. Showing the range and the athleticism. Well, this ball starting to die a little bit, but Vivian Martinez out with the reach. Texas with another scoreless top of the inning going to the bottom of the fourth, seven to one. Left field crowd taking in a good one. Maybe an opportunity to snag some more home run balls. There were five coming into today. Tony Day had one in the third. Brought two runs home, part of the seven that Texas has tallied thus far. Bottom of the fourth inning, Longhorns looking to make it a perfect weekend. Woo! Five and oh. Already went over Louisiana 6-2. Again, the weekend 9-3 against Tennessee State, 4-0 over McNeese State. 2-1 against quality pitching in the last matchup yesterday against Princeton. Yeah, I will say in yesterday's game against Princeton, I was really impressed with Princeton's pitcher. She did a great job of being able to adjust to Texas hitters, used her spin well. Against an offense like Texas, very rarely are you gonna be able to get through seven innings, so she did have relief come in, but kept Princeton in the game the whole game. Texas. We talked top of the show as the one two pitch in one of the best hitting teams, offensive teams in the country, number wise, coming into this weekend. Second in batting average, 385, sixth in runs per game, just under eight. 
20th in doubles, ninth in OBP. Strikeout looking though of Scott, second strikeout of the game. So that streak, maybe in jeopardy. Yeah, Mia Scott doesn't look as locked in today knowing exactly what UL pitching is throwing at her after Sam Landry got ahead of her two balls but comes back with that nice change up and just freezes Scott. Don't think she was expecting that pitch at all. Lou Gilbert will stay in the order. Bat for Washington. Senior from Kansas City, Missouri. A lot of Texas eyes will be trained on Kansas City, Kansas City, Missouri for the Big 12 tournament. Both the men's and women's basketball. It was a pretty good day for Texas athletics yesterday. Big win here at home for the men's basketball team over Kansas on senior day. Women victorious take a share of the Big 12 crown. So a lot of Texas fans will be watching the NCAA tournament just around the corner, but conference tournaments this weekend will be really good. My husband's a big basketball fan, played Division Three basketball himself, but I think when he realized the Kansas game was going on at Moody yesterday, he would have rather been over there instead of watching <laughs> two softball games. He was out supporting. He was out supporting for sure. Yeah, it was a good crowd. We've yet to beat a mo uh, be at a game in Moody. You haven't today. been? Not yet, so we'll have to make sure we hit one up next year. It's good, yeah. 2-1. Or maybe postseason if they get to, have they already announced to hosting sites? Women could be here. Okay. Yeah, so you could have a chance there. Women had a good crowd last week. Yeah, the women's basketball program under Vic Schaefer getting back to the to prominence. Hard hit ball by Gilbert over to first. Got Selnick makes the play for the out. Two up, two down. Baseball on the road this weekend, so not as much activity in the ball and stick corridor. You really mean there's more parking available. Not as many, you don't smell as many grills either. No, the grills are not fired up today. Back up the middle into the glove of Landry. A one, two, three inning for the Reggie Cajuns defense. Do up for them, seven, eight, nine. When we come back, they trail by six. Fit Gorgeous early spring day here at the ballpark. 7-1 lead for number 11, Texas over 24, Louisiana. Courtney Day, two-run home run. Her third home run of the weekend. Said Lolly Gutierrez has been the story in the circle for Texas. Longhorns looking for their ninth win in a row. Louisiana, three hits on the board. As we hit the fifth inning. Go back to that start for Gutierrez and how this game could have been different had Davis not been called out leaving early, but you said she really settled in. Defense helped her out in that second inning, turning the double play. And a one, two, three inning in the third. Did give up the one hit to Katzelnik. In the fourth. Well, the defense has definitely helped, but she's made some better pitches as well. Not as many barrels other than that single off of Kotzelnik's bat. Even that line drive to end the last inning wasn't necessarily hit hard, but it was just dying out and away from Vivian Martinez at shortstop. I love watching your reactions for all pitchers when we're up here, but I know 7-8-9, part of the lineup, especially when you look at the card, no hits on there for a pitcher to come out, pound the zone. Yeah, the key is to be able to pound the zone when you can, work around the plate when you need to. And that's just part of the game that I think we've gotten away from teaching at younger levels. 
is a lot of times high school or even travel ball pitches are just called in and no one discusses what they really want their pitcher to do execution wise and you can't just dial things up like a video game and say here go do it but talk to your pitcher about hey this kid is over she hasn't touched the ball hard so we're going to make sure we throw strikes or you know what this kid is two for two both bloop singles so i really still want you to be around the zone um, but having those conversations so pitchers learn too what their mindset needs to be because it's going to change hitter to hitter does come back with a strike to make it three and one to campbell popped up to second Count now three and two. It's that overall comprehensive plan. It's not just out there, how can I execute this pitch, the best pitch, but you know, those bigger things, and obviously the more experience you get, the more you can think and get put on your plate for who am I going against, scenarios. But for this young pitcher, already some history, three, two, for ball four. But can Texas shut the door? Can Louisiana? Capitalize on the leadoff walk. Back up the middle, Gutierrez thought about it at second, didn't think, had enough time to get Campbell. Valdez, the out over at first. That could have been potentially a double play, but Gutierrez had her mind made up to go to one already, so when she heard Vivian Martinez screaming two, 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 knew that her feet weren't gonna be set. At least the heads up, get the first out, secure an out any which way possible instead of trying to make a throw without your feet being set. Pinch hitter coming in for Louisiana, Laney Crater. Seventh at bat of the year, does have four hits. Sophomore from Old Mines, Missouri. Right back up the middle again to Gutierrez. Looks the runner off and takes the out over at first once again. Well, UL going after the first pitch, both for, from Victoria Valdez and now from Crater. Gutierrez snagging those balls up the middle. Great job by her to check the runner of Jordan Campbell at second base. Campbell was ready to go, but when pitcher turns and looks at you, if you're off and running, they're gonna dish that ball to middle infielder and get you in a rundown. But good defense by Gutierrez fielding her position. Top of the order, Maya Davis, first pitch offered two, bounces up on Scott. Safe on the corners for the Raging Cajuns. Mia Scott playing in to try to defend the soft slap and the speed of Maya Davis. But Davis able to put enough spin on that ball. Mia Scott couldn't handle it. It was gonna have to be a quick transfer and throw to get Davis with her speed. Hayden walked in the first, scored. Grounded out to short. Last time up in the third. To try to cut into this Texas lead. The opportunity's narrow. Ball is in play. Shallow left center field. Shortstop Martinez makes the grab. So two get on, but nothing doing run wise. Five, six, seven, due up for Texas, leading by six. Here changes the world. Well, the Texas Bomber is known to put out quite a few great athletes. And in this picture specifically, you have Victoria Valdez. This is Leanne Good over here, Valdez over here. 
Maya Davis, I believe, is here in the middle. But this same team the year before had Sophia Simpson as their pitcher. And the year after this photo, Sitlali Gutierrez pitched for them. So putting out some good products. And head coach James Burgess, one of the best at developing players. But that young squad loaded with talent. And it must be fun as a coach to be able to watch your former team all compete against each other. We to first diving into the bag. Kotzelnik gets Martinez. Well, Texas starting to be really aggressive on Sam Landry too, swinging at the first pitch, but she offers so many off-speed pitches. You have to be on time, Vivian Martinez with a weak ground ball, but Kotzelnik, second tough play over there against some Texas speedsters that she's made. Simmons struck out looking, popped out to short. Simmons, the first batter that Landry faced. So the timing change between her and actually Rhea Seto because Simmons didn't get to see Shoreman before they made a change. Piscos goes up top to snare that ball. No traffic though. With one out here in the bottom of the fifth. Texas were to get two. By virtue of the run rule would complete their undefeated weekend. Louisiana needing to keep Texas at bay for another opportunity at the plate. So Landry trying to work around the zone, went curveball off the plate, change up in the dirt, rise ball out of the zone. That looked like it was supposed to be another curveball off the plate, but low and out. Katie Simmons being patient. Payoff pitch. In play to short. Vasquez, long throw. Two up, two down. Outbound single. So Second this is consecutive. Twice now that we've seen her take the ball with her. This one almost beat her to the bag. Stormy Kotzelnik's like, I'll stay here and see if I can snag it. But knowing that they're playing behind the bag on her, continues to use the short game. Heads up play by Ashton Maloney to extend this inning. So two for three day for Maloney thus far. Hard hit ball out to left. Into the glove of Hayden for out number three, seven one. It stands top of the sixth inning. Three, four, five coming up for. It is back for a limited time, just like you like it. Seven one contest. Wave and say hi. Fans having a good weekend if you're wearing the burnt orange here in Austin across the course of the three days. Texas has compiled four wins, looking for their fifth, looking to make it nine in a row, looking for their 17th on the season. This is weekend number four, right? Yes. Turn around. Yeah, weekend number four, third so here at home for Texas. Texas will host a, another tournament. 
next weekend. Weather deciding to play ball this weekend. It's been nice. 78 degrees, it says right now. Sun is shining. What does Louisiana have here in the top of the sixth inning? Carly Heath doubled. First time up, popped out. Last time at the plate, big swing. Move the count to one and one. That was a great off-speed pitch by Gutierrez. We've been talking about Sam Landry using hers, but Gutierrez goes inside to, to uh, Heath with that. Big swing and miss. There's a big swing, ball is in place, center field, Dayton over, shielding the sun. One up, one down. Texas last played on the road, February 12th. It's Kentucky, that is the tie that is on their record. 4-4, it went down in Clearwater. Travel constraints for Kentucky. Changing that one, hot shot to short. Off the glove of Martinez, just couldn't quite hold on to the hard hit ball from Piscos. We mentioned that Piscos has been heating up for the Cajuns, hitting 571 coming into today on the weekend. Not overall, but just the weekend. But a bat that Coach Jerry Glasgow has really wanted to see pick up because he does like what she offers both behind the plate and offensively if there can be some consistency. Council Nick, third time up as well. Flew out to center, single. Last at bat in the fourth. Gutierrez continues to work in the circle. High of a ball in play as we've seen. Off the Raging Cajun bat, it's Maloney there to make the grab for the second out. Cajun still really attacking early in the count. Saw Carly Heath go after the 1-0 pitch. So Pithia Piscos hit the first pitch and Stormy Kosselnik, second pitch of the at-bat there, but they're being really aggressive early against Gutierrez. And she changes speed so often that it's an interesting philosophy just because her off-speed pitch spins tightly with upspin and is usually around the strike zone it can keep you off balance. A lot of atom balls today for Louisiana. It's a Megan Willis term she brought to me. I don't know if she got it from you, maybe back in the day. One of the right atoms. Right atom. Four hits on the board for Louisiana. Two of those were in the first inning. So since then, Gutierrez. I think Adams, but at the same time, the defense has made some really good plays behind Gutierrez that has eliminated some threats. Double play in the second inning. Looked like some momentum early on. Chronicled the first inning. Davis getting called for leaving the bag early in what could have been more than just one run to the tally, but Gutierrez, the defense, has maintained, stepped up. When, when we talked to Jerry Glass, when he talked about those mental errors, it just changes the momentum of the game. And so for his team, you talk about that. If the leaving early doesn't get called, what's the momentum at, after the top of the first instead of Texas chasing one? Are they chasing multiples? Scott coming in, had to wait on the ball. The runner is safe, so it does give enough time to Langleyers to leg it out. <laughs> 
Well, this is a hard chopper, and Mia Scott having to come over. Doesn't get a good hand on it. It's a close play. Coach White going to pop out and say he wants that reviewed. Bunch of close plays over there at first base for first base umpire Brian Crochet today. Yeah, the lunge from Langliers. She does get the safety back just with the toes. She gets the tip of it. The question is going to be, is it? I don't know. I don't know that there's a too close to call. Yeah, Once again, a, that's not a over there. definitive view there. This, this would will be. be the look. I think so there. Oh, I think she's closing the glove before it's there. Well, she's definitely closing the glove there. Is the ball in the glove right there? Yes. Yeah, I would say that one, I feel like, can be overturned. But we shall see. We are not the deciding factors. We are not the deciding factors. Right there, it looks as if yeah, I the think ball is in, in the glove before the foot is on the bag. Glove of Simmas, the foot of Langliers. Call on Over at third. Umps are deciding. Or to be an out would be the third of the inning. And it is indeed call overturned. A successful review for Texas, 7-1. It remains bottom of the sixth inning. Texas coming to the plate. Upcoming schedule for Texas. Mentioned they do have to leave home. Maybe do want to break up having been home for such a long period of time. They go up the road to UT Arlington. Midweeker Wednesday on ESPN Plus and then host some quality competition for the Bevo Classic. Wisconsin in town, number nine, Alabama for the last bowl. Texas State as well, all joining for the fourth tournament. Texas will host on the young season. Nine one two do up for Texas. The Longhorns get two, it ends. Louisiana needing three outs to give themselves another chance at the plate. Figure to learn a lot about Texas next weekend. Yeah, since, well, since opening weekend, it'll be their, their first test consistently. I feel like they did have the two games against Virginia Tech, but Wisconsin and Texas State both competitive programs as well. Dayton rips it up the middle on to begin the inning. That's a Texas State program that last year went to the Sun Belt Championship game against Louisiana. The Raging Cajuns winning 7-1 to one on their way to a 47-13 record, 23-4 overall. They go to the Clemson Regional, have a 2-2 two two record there. Clemson ending their season at 8-0 five inning run rule victory, but team that will also bring in a challenge for Texas and the rest of the competition down here, Alabama, see top 10. Well, and you mentioned Texas State making the Sun Belt Championship and they were in the conversation for the NCAA tournament. They were one of the first four out when a committee member was interviewed. So put together a good resume, just a few too many losses to what they're gonna call quarter four teams early in season that cost them that ability. But a team that also came here to the Austin Regional two years prior to that and upset an Oregon team and put together a good fight during that regional. So routinely a team that is in the conversation for the NCAA tournament. Oh yeah, you're just prepping the basketball fans for quadrant talk and that's gonna be Big this week as we you lead know, up to the NCAA. You know, it's interesting because in basketball, it's it's a big thing. And to be honest, I had never heard of it really in oh, our yeah. in our sense when the tournaments are being picked. But last year, that's what uh, that was the that was the explanation. Leanne Good gets on the bunt single. Well, we've seen her use her stick for power and seeing Valdez playing back. Leanne Good goes ahead and drops this down. I think Valdez thought for a second to see if she could let it roll all the way to third base if it might go foul. But Texas using a little bit of small ball right now to get some things going.
Mia Scott has brought the fans into this game, Texas. Game ending run over on first base and Leanne Good that can move as can Bella Dayton. And Scott came in. 20 consecutive games on base. Trying to continue that. Put into the glove of the left fielder Hayden. So it looks like Scott's streak will end. Lou Gilbert. Subbed in the third inning, one at bat. The ground out to first base. We've seen Texas shift their lineup and their defense and the depth they have allows them to do that. Gilbert easily able to slide in for Washington. Scott, who started in the outfield, moved over to third base. Runner popped out, both did. This goes from the catching position, had checked both of them good, could have found herself in a rundown, but able to get back. I'm not sure if there was a steal on and Bella Dayton realized she was gonna be post or if they read a ball in the dirt, not so much in the dirt, but Piscos came out quick and both runners having to retreat. Two pitch to Gilbert. This goes trying to hold it for the frame. Count moves to full. That was a good pitch by Landry right there. Trying to get Lou Gilbert to reach low and out. Gilbert puts this one into play. Dayton being waved home. Mike White holds good over at third. Texas with their eighth run of the day. Well, the pitch before this was actually better, but Lou Gilbert goes down and gets this pitch, drives it right over the head of Vasquez, a shortstop. You see Bella Dayton have to look to make sure it wasn't gonna get snagged by Vasquez. But Texas potentially with the game ending run at third base. And who more poetically to come to the plate for Texas given their success this weekend than Courtney Day. She's seeing the ball like a beach ball. She swung at that one like she's seeing it. Three home runs on the weekend. One in today's contest. Came back in the third inning. She doesn't need a long ball. It would put some flair to the dramatic. Battery will take a moment to talk how they want to deal with Day. This was earlier in the contest. Day sees a pitch by Shorman, a curveball up in the zone, and just unleashes that to left center field. The effortless power that Courtney Day possesses is just rare. You don't see her over swinging ever. It's a smooth swing. Coach White calls her a, gen or a quiet giant because such an unassuming personality as well. And Louisiana not going to let her try to end this game. They're going to wow. force Texas to have to do it with somebody else. Well, you're not going to a slouch in Viviana Martinez behind her. So I get you play the numbers, you play the hot bat, but a walk, anything brings home a run. So the intentional walk, it looks like, is coming to Courtney Day. 
will load the bases. Well, and it loads the bases too to, to generate a force out anywhere for the defense as well. Vivi and Courtney Day if up the middle could be a double play. So many opportunities that it sets up. But Vivian Martinez has been known to leave the infield quite a bit herself. So interesting decision, especially after you just went down 0-1 on the first swing of the at-bat for Courtney Day. Could have seen an unintentional intentional walk, like spread the plate, pitch around her, don't let her reach for something. But ULL taking the gamble, or UL, excuse me, taking the gamble. So good about that today until the, just then. Martinez back up the middle of this, the double play ball you talked about. The force was at home, so they don't get two, but they do get the all-important run out at home to stave off the game ending. So Martinez aggressive. Louisiana executes defensively. Simmons 0 for 3 on the day. Well, and that's why you load the bases right there and just take the gamble. The ground ball then allows you to have a force play and Coach Jerry Glasgow trusts his middle infielders. Pisco's holding on to that ball. Contested the last two pitches. That one gets behind her. It's maybe ball game. Landry in the circle, trying to give her team one more chance at the plate. Sim is at the plate, trying to end it for Texas, takes the strike. It's a good take there by Simis, not seeing the ball incredibly well. Landry wild on her first two pitches, no reason to be overly aggressive. Good thrown out at home on the force. It's Gilbert over at third, the game ending run. Landry coming back. That off-speed pitch inside was pretty, just a little bit low, but comes in there, tucks a screwball in against Simis. 60th pitch for Landry. This is an important one. Ball that looked to be tailing inside. Count will remain 3-2. Game ending run is on third. Lou Gilbert. Texas looking for their ninth win in a row. Make it a perfect weekend. That's the curveball that Landry snuck in there for strike one, Katie Simmis. Ready for it that time. That foul ball right before this was that off-speed pitch in again, and it was, you're right, Tyler's tailing down and in. Eighth pitch of the at-bat. Landry awaits the pitch call, ready to go. Sim is there. This ball is in play to left field. And Louisiana will have one more chance at the plate. Seven, eight, nine coming up. Texas had the opportunity to end the game in the bottom of the sixth inning, but Louisiana gets one more shot. 7-8-9, Campbell, Valdez, Vasquez. Out of this trio that is due up, barring any pinch hitters, Campbell, the loan that has reached, it was a walk her last time up. The fifth inning, Gutierrez. Good to go in the circle, trying to shut the door for Texas.
Well, Gutierrez already career high in innings pitched in a game. Going six complete so far. Looking for win number five. Be your second complete game. It's a run rule victory. Woo! Last Sunday. Been impressed with the freshman though so far. She's done a good job after the first inning of settling in. She lets her defense work. Keeps a good tempo of the game. Hard hit out to left, going back to the track. That is over. Campbell. Well, Gutierrez has settled in. She tried to use this off-speed curve back-to-back, -back, but this one is up in the zone. Jordan Campbell is able to pull this down the left field line to give some life to this Cajun offense in the top of the seventh. Third home run of the season for Jordan Campbell. Pinch hitter will come in. Warren Allred. The home run links look like have been busted out. Freshman from Texarkana, Texas, Allred. Ten at bats coming in. Four hits, seven runs batted in. Triple and two home runs, so. Of the four hits, three of them extra bases. Hard hit ball once again. Back to the track and back to back home runs for Louisiana. Campbell will have to pass the jewelry, I think. Well, again, Sidlali Gutierrez tries to go with her off-speed pitch back-to-back to, back to a hitter, but she elevates it. And Louisiana, knowing she throws that pitch a lot, they're starting to be more aggressive at it. But if it's up in the zone, they're going to be able to get the barrel to it like Campbell and Allred have. It's like another pinch hitter. They have multiple jewelry section down there in the Cajuns. At the home run dugout. chain getting passed around. Pinch hitter will be Kylie Griffin. So no outs on the board. Two runs already. Eight to three contest. See, so got Lolly Gutierrez coming in with that hardened in pitch. Her off speed curve is good, but you have to be able to mix speeds, and you can't just sit on one pitch alone, especially late in ball games when you've shown it to an offense so much. Agent Cajuns have shown the fight. Still plenty of opportunity here in the top of the seventh. Big swing and a miss, strikeout for Sitlali Gutierrez. What a great rebound right there by Gutierrez. Coach White call it, calling time, coming out, settling her down just a little bit, saying, hey, let's hit some better spots. 
She uses her drop ball here on the outer half. That ball just dips right under the bat of Griffin. Great pitch by Gutierrez. Top of the order with one down, Maya Davis. Single struck out looking, reached via an air over at third by Scott. That was the last time up in the fifth. Tough spot right there by Gutierrez for Davis to lay off of. She does, but that ball was so close to being the same pitch that she struck out looking on in the third inning. Drop ball by Gutierrez with a little bit of a screwball tail to it. Back up the middle. Martinez will take it at short. And out over at first is Davis. Remember, Coach Glasgow's already looked at two. Coach Glasgow's going to go talk to home plate umpire Brian Crochet, but yeah, he's already exhausted his two replays. Now, umpires do have at their discretion the ability to replay something after the sixth inning. But at the same time, they don't have to. with the trios getting together to discuss. Call on the field was throw from Martinez to get Maya Davis. Umpire and crew gonna go ahead and take it upon themselves to initiate a replay. Here's what they are looking at. The call on the field. It's going to be tough to see through there. The question is going to be if Katie Simmons has her foot on the bag when she secures the ball or not. Can't see there Can't out of the frame. Well, it looks like her toe might have been on. So can the ups find Stretches. enough to overturn? She does come off the bag, but just don't know. Looks like there she has the ball, foot's on the bag, foot is not down of Davis. Last call we saw was overturned. Obviously, no bearing to what right. this outcome will be, but saw two earlier that were as standard stands stood. Two earlier stood, one overturned. I just don't know that the timing of that is conclusive enough. No question, a little bit better throw. It beats Davis. So it's not if Davis beat the throw. It's just if Simmons was able to keep her toe on the bag right at that point right there. Yeah, and Davis was moving. Martinez rifled that thing. She was very close, though. Look. One foot on the chalk in the circle. So will this stand as out number two? Texas one out away in their fifth victory of the weekend, or will Louisiana have one more out to work with? Call on the field. Stands. I will say all what, four replays we've had now have been extremely close plays. And obviously that's what it's there for, but a lot of times you're looking at a tag or something, and today all four have been those force outs. It was all glove, ball, foot. Oh, a correction, the one at third base was actually if the tag got there but in time, but. Still close nonetheless. Yeah. 0 for 2.
Maddie Hayden walked in the first inning, grounded to short in the third. Does ground there. Now long throw to be safe. Carly Heath still opportunity for Louisiana. Heath cuts at the first pitch back and that'll do it. Gilbert gloves it in. Texas gets their ninth in a row. Fifth of the weekend. Longhorns move to 17. Two and one on the season. Kat, your takeaways. You know, overall, a great outing for freshmen. Sitlali Gutierrez, her first seven inning complete game. A little rough in the seventh, but a freshman has to work through those nerves. But offensively, Texas got done, got the job done early, and the cushion was big enough for Gutierrez. More importantly, we wish you the best, and we hope to see you back here very soon. Good luck. Thank you. I will, I will be back. Texas will be back next weekend hosting the Bebo Classic. You'll find that here on Longhorn Network. But the Longhorns register win number 17. Take care of business here at home in the Longhorn Invitational 15 and 1. They are in the friendly confines. For Kat Osterman, our whole LHN crew, Tyler Denning. So long from Austin, Texas.